I generally love animals. I mean, don't even get me started on dogs and puppies. And I just love watching any videos of baby animals. Even some insects are really cute at times, like a fuzzy caterpillar or a ladybug. But people, there are some creatures that defy explanation. The very fact they exist can make a person question everything they hold dear. That's right, folks. It's time we talk about hornets. Like the demon spawn of a wolverine and a vampire bat, this vicious monster can give you nightmares. Just look. Ah. No, sorry, that's a uh, USS Hornet, a aircraft carrier. Go to the next picture. Ah, that's the, uh, no, sorry, that's the F-18 Super Hornet. Come on, guys, next one, next one. Give me that. That is actually a horn in a net. A horn in a net. Give me the right picture. Oh, here, ah! Hey there, Victor family. Welcome to the Wednesday Word, where we're bringing you words of encouragement direct from the Holy Scriptures. As always, folks, I hope you're having a great week. But if you're not, you have definitely come to the right place because nothing is more encouraging than the Word of God. Okay, folks, so why do we need to talk about hornets? Why do we talk about these little monsters? Well, because at one point, God used them to make a place for his chosen people and to demonstrate his power over all creation. Now, if you haven't read the book of Joshua recently, here's a quick recap. It begins after the death of Moses, following 40 years of wandering in the desert. And God instructs Joshua to lead the Israelites into the promised land of Canaan. The first section of Joshua details the Israelites crossing the Jordan, going to battle against the Canaanites, and destroying the idolatrous cities, you know, Jericho being the most famous. In the middle section, Joshua himself describes how the land will be divided between the tribes. And in the final section, before Joshua dies, he gathers all of the people and lays down some serious truths that God has given directly to him to have the people here. Joshua says, basically, listen, Israel, this is what the Lord says. I called your forefather Abraham. I brought you out of Egypt. I led you through the desert and saved you from your enemies. And then I led you to the river Jordan and to the doorstep of the promised land. And Joshua chapter 24, verse 11 starts like this. And you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho. And the leaders of Jericho fought against you. And also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And I gave them into your hand. And I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out before you. The two kings of the Amorites, it was not by your sword or by your bow. I gave you a land on which you had not labored and cities that you had not built, and you dwell in them. You eat the fruit of the vineyards and olive orchards that you did not plant. Now you might be wondering, why is this supposed to be encouraging? I mean, parasites, huh? Girgashites, and God sending hornets after people? But you know, folks, what I see here are some similarities between modern day followers of Christ like us and the Israelites, you know? They're far from perfect, very far, you know, backsliding all the time. But ultimately, they are trying to believe in God's promise and to follow him where he led. But at the same time, they're surrounded and threatened by people who are overtly opposed to God, who mock God. They revel in their unrighteousness and they want to do away with the Israelites. And we can also see in this story that alone, the Israelites, they had no chance to clear the promised land from these unrighteous people. But hallelujah, praise the Lord, because they were not alone. God was in control. Even though they didn't realize it at the very moment, he says, I set the hornet before you. He says, I gave you the land. You did not build the cities. You didn't plant the orchards. You didn't plant the vineyards. I made this for you. It's my victory. And we may look at the state of the world around us and the people around us and say, what has this world come to? I mean, it seems like everywhere people hate God and mock God and mock those who follow him. But there's also no denying that unrighteousness and idolatry are nothing new. We can see it on every page of the Bible since the creation of humankind. So no matter how much we might shake our heads in despair about the state of the country or the world, we can find comfort in this truth. God is not surprised by any of this. God knows everything that has happened and will happen. And God is in complete control. His victory is already won. 
No matter what the people who mock him might think, we don't have to feel like we have to conquer the world. God has already conquered it. He is just bringing about his victory in his own way, in his own time. God administers justice in his own way. He sent the hornet at one point, and only God knows what he will do next. But we can trust that he knows and he will declare his righteousness. And I think we could take great comfort in what Joshua says after he recounts the story of God sending the hornets to wipe out his enemies, as he closes his address, Joshua warns the Israelites, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So friends, let's not panic over the state of the world but let's do everything we can to show everyone that we will serve the Lord. And let's also do everything we can to share the glory of Christ with everyone who needs him because he is in control and no matter what anyone thinks, God will be honored. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you are in control, that nothing on this world, no matter how bad it seems at times, is out of your control. Your victory is already won and you are bringing it about in your time. Lord, we thank you for your power and your majesty and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Victor family. I hope you have a wonderful week. Hey man, what did you think about this thing? I made it. It's a horn in a net. Get it? It's a horn net, like a hornet. We get it. Horn net.